Hi everyone, welcome to the new tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be again related to variables. So the variables are very powerful function that's been added in uh, Magic Q starting from version, I believe, 1960 or 1961. And uh, the feature that I'm going to show you today, one of the features I'm going to show you today is has been brought into the Magic Q only in the 1962. So I'm using the latest alpha, therefore I have this function. So if you're looking for this function and you were looking for how to achieve something I'm going to show you in a moment, then this is going to be an answer for you. So again, this is like for the pro level. If you haven't watched the first original three tutorials, please watch them. So without further ado, uh, this tutorial is going to be a little bit long, but this is what I want to show you and I want to achieve following. So let's say you have 10 flames or 10 CO2s and you would like to run them, but the non, in a non-sequential order, for example. How can you calculate how much, for example, uh, flame fluid or the CO2 left in your in your cylinders. So in that case, I wanted to, for example, track 10 of my flames or CO2s, doesn't matter. And I said there is a limit of 10 seconds in all of them, and I would like to run them. But the problem is, if I run them all together, that's very simple. So they calculate all together at the same time. However, what if I want to run sometimes at odd units? So you can see now, in my case, I have a separate calculations for odds, and then I will have separate calculations for even numbers. But I can go in further, I can press effects, and you can see it will be calculated per fixture. But in actual case, in this case, I'm actually calculating everything per channel rather than per fixture or specific attribute. So how to achieve this? This is tutorial is going to be all about it. Again, I, I apologize, it's going to be a long one, potentially, but I'm going to show you everything in details what I've achieved. So again, if you haven't watched my first original three, three tutorials, please go there to understand more what I will be showing you here. So what I achieved is uh, what I have achieved is following. So when it's going to be running, so you can see it's all countdown is going down, it's all okay. But then at some point when it reaches the zero, you will see my first unit will also turn off. So you'll see it's running, 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 and then it turns off. That's it. So now I can only sort of output the other nine units. But again, I will show you how to make sure you turn off all of them. So that means none of them is going to be working uh, when the timer is finished until you press reset. And then if you press reset, then everything is going back and then you can continue working again. So I'm going to show you how to do it per each fixture or per channel. And that that would require you to create some dummy playbacks and then uh, you will be able to achieve this thing. So first of all, what we have here, let's look at the rig we have. So we have 10 generic dimmers as per my previous tutorials. And they're patched on the channels, uh, universe one, channel one, universe one, channel two, etc., etc. You will understand why it is important that I'm showing you this. Then what I have created, I have created uh, a playback, say all at full. So if you double click that playback and then you go into the view queue, you will see I've actually selected all my 10 uh, generic dimmers and I put them at full. So every time I press the button, all the flames or all the heads will be going at full. So that means you can run them together. Then in this playback in odd number, you will see that I have the odd number fixtures, one, three, five, seven, and nine, and they've recorded uh, their dimmers at 100%. And even I've done the same things for the even numbers. And then center out is just an effect of the dimmers that go center out. You can see center out effect, and this is how it looked like. So this is very, very basic, and this is what you have to do, okay? Then after that, the logic is going to be following. So when you press the playbacks to run, okay? So instead of, like in the previous uh, tutorials, instead of applying the variable, activate release variables into here, so this doesn't matter, so I don't put them into variable two, I'm not calculating as per this playback because I want to calculate per fixture. In that case, I've uh, created in the stack store, I've created 10 separate dummy playbacks. 
So these playbacks have got no channels inside. So if you look at this playback, if you click on this, and that, there's nothing inside. If you go into the view queue stack, and if you look into the view queue, uh, sorry, this is not the right playback. It's looking at the wrong one. So I'm going to look at this particular queue stack 21. So if you look at queue stack 21, okay, and if you look at view queue, you will see nothing is recorded inside. There's no view times, there's no effects, okay? It's absolutely, you see, queue stack 21, absolutely empty. There's nothing inside. Let's look at queue stack 22. And then we see here 22, view queue stack 22, view queue, nothing inside. So those ones are dummy playbacks. But every time you actually uh, activate the channels, these playbacks will get activated. And then in the view options, if you look activate release, these units have actually got the total activated time and a variable. So this is actual fixture that the countdown is going to be related to. So, so that means like if I look at the execute window, this one, so this unit, this one, is going to be linked to my those dummy Q stacks. You can see them here, Q stack 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, etc. And I've created them basically just having nothing in my programmer. I press record and I click playback. That's it. That, that's all I did. And then inside of this playback, I went to the view Q stack, activate the release time. I set my variable to be 10 seconds. That's all I did. It's exactly the same things I did over here. Then what I did was I've created 10 of them. Why? To represent 10 in my execute window. Okay. Then I've created, for example, uh, set grid size 10 by 2. So you can see them here. Okay. And then I clicked into assign special playback plus Q stack. And here I've chosen the option which is called Q stack variable 2 minus total active, like I showed in the other uh, tutorial. And then I, I, I put the link to the Q stack number 21. So now this stack 21, Q stack 21, has got the link, this, this one has got the link to this Q stack. And these Q stacks get activated every time my first unit is get, getting activated. And you may ask the question, saying, okay, Aziz, you showed us how to create this, we know how to create it. However, how does Magic Q knows when to activate that playback and when to not activate that playback? And this is where the new functionality comes in, in the latest 1962. Okay, so you have to go to the macros. Okay, this function will only work if you have unlocked magic queue. So in my case, I'm using uh, Rackman dongle and it's unlocked. You can also unlock it with all the uh, mini wings, PC wings, uh, mini compacts, uh, the, all the wings from magic uh, from campsis and also with the GM5 and GM10 uh, Artnet nodes, network nodes. So then the campsis added the new function in the macro, which is called channel value. Okay. And then you have an option to set the channels to be rising up. That means when you press and activate the, the uh, fixture to go at 100% or something, that means your channel will be rising. And this is where you use the rising channel. And when the rising happens, it will ask you on what channel. You specify channel universe one, uh, channel one. This is exactly the, the G DMX address of this generic dimmer. So it's a one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so after that, you will say when the channel is rising, please activate, so stack activate, you use this option, stack activate, and then you put the Q stack number. You put Q stack number 21, which is that Q stack. And it says it's gonna activate the first Q. But then when the, you let the button go, okay, See, you let the button go, the channel value will start falling of the channel number one 
uh, universe one uh, channel one. So that means the the intensity start going down. And in that case, the magic queue says, please release the queue stack number 21. And then it gets released. So uh, I will show you how I activated the same thing. So I, if you press insert automation, and then you make sure it's enabled, you double click and you say, I want to change, uh, I want to see the channel values changing. And I want to see them going up. And when I see them going up on universe one, channel one, so this is my demo channel, the one I had. In that case, I want the Q stack, so Q stack activate. And you put the Q stack number, let's say 21. And then I want the first Q to start. So now my channel will go up and you will see here it will show enable, active. But when the channel will go down, Again, I want to do channel value level falling on the channel and you can type one dash one. I want the Q stack to be released. And here you put the Q stack number. So now it will do exactly the same. So when you have, if you don't have this one, so when you activate, it will go up. When you let it go, it will go, it will stop. So therefore, you will see your uh, execute values will go down or stop. So again, I press now. As soon as I click on this, it tells it tells the uh, it tells the macro to uh, hey, my channel is going up. So please activate the Q stack. So it says, hey, activate the Q stack number 21. So it goes here, it activates the Q stack number 21. So as soon as you activate the Q stack number 21, the countdown will start, okay? And then you go back and then you release Q stack and the countdown will stop, okay? So this, I hope this, this is clear. It's very, very uh, simple if you watched my previous tutorial. So the logically you will get here. But then there's going to be the last question. You say, okay, when you will run it till the full end, that Q stack, I want the, the channels to stop. The problem is there is no activate or deactivate the Q stack based on the, the channel. So what I have created, I created another Q stack, uh, another macro that will actually do the trick. So you'll see here, as soon as my Q stack finishes, you'll see the lights turned off. Okay, and you may ask the question, okay, how can you do that? So in that case, I've actually did a little bit of trick, trickery. So what I did is following. I've created a Q stack 31 and I forced the channel one to be at zero. In that case, and let me show you for the second unit how I can do it. So let's say I'm gonna select a, a dimmer. So this one, channel number two. So this one, I'm gonna select two, at zero enter so i've set in the programmer the fixture number two at zero now i go to the q stack window i press record and i click here so now here i've recorded a q stack with the uh, channel number two at zero so i can make a label if i want so put chan two at zero then you go to the Q stack. So you see, this is the Q stack. I don't need to change anything here. I go to advanced and in the advanced, I'm gonna say you will be all channels control LTP in order for it to override the, 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 the specific channel. I will say block any effects on this affecting and also you can change priority maybe to be high. So what, what this actually do? So when you have a playback running, right at the end, when the uh, counter hits like a zero, so when it matches the variable two, in that case, I've created a macro here. So it's gonna be similar to this macro. So I've inserted the automation and I'm gonna say, hey, 
if my variable on the Q stack 30, uh, 22, so I'm going to say if my variable on Q stack 22 with active timer or variable uh, variable 2, so my active timer is greater than variable 2, so I need to select uh, here, option greater than variable 2. In that case, please uh, stack activate. And here I put the Q stack number 32. Because when the channels are trying to go to 100%, my this Q stack will suppress it to zero. Therefore, there's going to be no output. So, but then when the timer is actually zero, so I'm going to say insert timer when I reset it, Q stack 22, and the active timer is actually equals to zero, then I want to magic Q to release stack number 32. So this is how it's going to work. So if you have the Q stack running, let's say we press this one, so all the playbacks going down, okay, and the outputs are still working. So when it all goes all the way down, you will see the first two will turn off. Why? Because every time I press this button, if you look into the output window, you will see my lights are trying to go to 100% on the channel. But these two are suppressed by these two playbacks that stating you must run dimmer at zero. And I have higher, um, I have higher um, uh, priority level. Therefore, there's going to be no output on these two. And no matter what you press, nothing's going to happen. The only thing is going to happen when you go back and you press reset. When you press reset all, then these two Q stacks get disabled because now the uh, active timer is about zero, uh, is, is less than the uh, variable two, and it all starts working again. So then you can start working and you can run them again. So if you're not sure about the functionality I'm talking about, is they are within the, the Q stack variables that's been added, I believe in the version, now let me check. I think this is the version 1960, yes. So this is the new function that's been added that you can use for the countdowns. And uh, yeah, they're here for the d d different variables. So then there's gonna be variables, how to do the resets and everything. Again, I've shown how to use all this, a lot of these things in my previous tutorials. Please watch it and then you will be able to understand more about this tutorial. Again, thank you for joining me. I'm sorry for this to be long, but again, uh, if you're a professional, you want to learn how to do the variables and on a channel per channel control, uh, this was the tutorial for you. Thank you for joining and I hope it was useful training for you. Please press like and share this video to whoever you want. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.